It's a real blessing to have all of you here. And uh, those of you who are joining us on our live stream, uh, it's a blessing to have you. Welcome, and we are having a, a holiday weekend, so praise the Lord for that. So we do have some announcements like to share with you this morning. First, we've got some changes to our picnic. So the date is the same. The times are the same. It's Saturday, September 11th, 3 to 7 p.m. here at the church. Okay, it's not down at the lake like we've normally done in the past. It's going to be here at the church. All right. And we'll hopefully have uh, some tables and such outside here. Um, that's the plan. And if it rains, we'll be inside. But the key to the picnic is the fact that um, the Greens aren't going to be able to make it. This was supposed to be focusing on missions. It still will be. But unfortunately, Mike Green has uh, contracted COVID while they are in North Carolina. So please keep Mike up in prayer. It's a mild case. Thank goodness they're on quarantine. But they need to get back to Honduras before the next team comes in um, later this month. So they are hoping to be back in Honduras by the 16th. So please, please keep uh, Mike up in prayer for his health. Ginger's asked uh, uh, for to be kept up in prayer so that uh, she doesn't get angry. <laughs> uh, and she's handling it quite well and that they can get back to Honduras on the 16th. So the change we're going to make, Nick keeps wanting to go to the next slide, but I'm not done with the picnic yet, Nick. The, the key change is going to be now Bill and Jen Morlang are going to join us instead of uh, the Green. So we will still have a missions focus. They are the folks that minister uh, in Papua New Guinea. So we're still going to have this missions focus. It's going to be the Morlangs, Papua New Guinea, and the Melchizedeks. So thank goodness for that. Now, Nick. The next one, and then very briefly, we moved the gathering from last Friday because of uh, the holiday weekend to September 10th. I hope to see you there. Now, on to the missions front. Uh, to Honduras, just briefly going to give an update. The staff member of the week is O'Neill. O'Neill is the man who uh, recently got saved, uh, as well as his entire family. And uh, O'Neill has been working at uh, Monte de Horeb since March because his dad had fallen ill and they needed income. And um, he needed dialysis three times a week and there was no income coming in for the family. So O'Neill started working uh, for uh, Monte de Horeb. And then in May, he got saved in his entire family. Uh, his uh, community is Sarah Mararon. And there in Serra Mararon, we find out that O'Neill is actually the mayor of that community, and they are working to build a church there. So keep keep uh, them up in prayer. And then on to um, Okara, Pakistan, and uh, Shumela and uh, Suhail. They had a picnic for all four villages. They are up to four villages now. It is 8-4-L, 9-4-L, 10-4-L, and 11-4-L. Hopefully, or it's fortunate that they're all in numeric order. This way I can remember it. But they had 110 children from these four villages come into this park. And um, they had 10 staff members to help coordinate it. Uh, this is only a portion of the folks that you, or the children that you can see there. And then on the next slide, I just love this. So it wasn't just the kids that got involved. It's the adults as well. And so there you see the adults, including that last picture of Shamela, uh, enjoying uh, hamburgers. Most of these kids have never been to a park before. Most of these kids never had hamburgers before. Their hamburgers are a little different shape than our hamburgers. And the funny thing is there was a child that Shamela walked up to, and she said, can I have your hamburger? And he said, no. He was not going to share his hamburgers. So thank you for all the support of our missions. It's because of you that we are able to do this and support them. And so please now, if you're so inclined, you can stand and join us as we worship the Lord this morning.
Hail Jesus, you're my King. Your life is me to say. I'll praise you all my days. You're perfect in all your ways. Hail Jesus, you're my Lord. I will obey your words. I want to see your kingdom come.
cover to cover. Old Testament law, New Testament grace. It's all the love of God and how to live because He created us. I want to welcome everybody here today, both here and live stream. And I'm going to, uh, first of all, identify out of Nehemiah 4, uh, the children of Israel were working together to rebuild uh, Israel. And the verse there is, and they had a mind to work. And so I want to identify on Labor Day Sunday uh, a few people that have a mind to work. And as I call your name, I'd like for you to stand until I get your group. Uh, so first of all, the elders and the leaders line, uh, Mark and Kevin. Uh, uh, Kevin, if you'll stand, associate pastor, uh, Mark, elder, and uh, financial. And then Wendy, uh, uh, where's Wendy? There she is, Sunday School Superintendent and Catch-All Lady. You want to know anything about the building, about the function, she's the one to see. And there's also Chris, and I believe Chris is home uh, sick today, but he takes care of the building. Uh, for those of you that are new, uh, we're Elder Rural Church, and then deacons con uh, control uh, the functional part. Uh, so I want to give uh, you four a hand. God bless you. Thank you for all of that. I uh, also want to identify the worship team that just left. I was going to catch them, but who wrote the book of love was there. Uh, if you're on the worship team, please stand, because they practice during the week, they prepare, they're very faithful, and I want to thank you. Okay, Lord bless you. All right. Also want uh, Melissa, a Sunday school teacher, Kevin, a Sunday school teacher, and my wife, uh, Kathy, a uh, women's uh, dinner and she teaches there and keeps all the women in stand up kathy okay and you're going to give them a hand all right thank you and uh we also have uh the sound and live stream people they're hid behind the doors back there sarah and pat if you'll stick your head out brian if you'll stand up uh we want to thank you for the sound says oh and, and uh nick if you'll stand and give them a hand okay And last but not least, because you'll know it if, if uh, uh, she doesn't clean, Ella, will you stand? She keeps this whole building clean. Amen. Okay. I say, I say last but not least, and then I look out and see the outside. I want Dave and Jonathan Ballesteri. They mow the lawn. They did a good job this week. Amen. Okay, David. And I really want to thank all of you. God has a reward for everybody. And whenever you have a church in the natural, you can only identify so many people. But God has your number and God has your reward forever and ever. want to uh, uh, really encourage you to be here this Saturday for the picnic right outside. We're going to have a tent and chairs and table there for the Melchizedeks. They have a cook wagon that they take to all different states in the biker world. And... Uh, it's new, so they want to cook for us and present uh, a, a give us a picnic to say thank you. I really want you to uh, at least stop in and see them, introduce yourself, uh, because that is a ministry. I know the other three ministries in the outreach ministries mean much to the whole church, as all of you support them, and I thank you for that. Uh, but the Melchizedeks are close to my heart, uh, so please be here for that. Now, I'm going to pick on... Uh, Harrison for just a moment because Isla has to work today uh, but we picked on Isla last week but this is a challenge for you Harrison uh, th these are newlyweds for those of you that don't know and uh, this is taken out of Joshua 24 14 and 15 but it's made as a prayer and if you don't have one of these booklets please pick one up they're all one-liner uh, scriptures said as a prayer so you can know the perfect will of God on any one of these topics. When you pray scripture, you're praying the perfect will of God. And so this prayer is for the husband, and you can claim this, Harrison. I have chosen this day whom I will serve. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. I choose the blessing, the life that I, ha that I and my descendants may have to love the Lord our God, to obey his voice and to cling to him for he is our life and the length of our days. So Harrison, that one's for you. Uh, make sure you keep that and pray that together uh, with Isla. Today I want to speak about it's a head thing and it's a heart thing. It's interesting the songs about I want to know you more uh, and build your love in my life. 
It's a head thing and a heart thing. I want to speak about two houses. We've been talking about the house that's built on the rock, the house that's built on the sand. But I want to speak about two houses, two spirits, two people, and two results. And we have that in our life, Sunday school. We can follow the spirit, we can follow the flesh, and we have to battle that and see who wins. And so today I want to speak about it's a head thing and a heart thing. So continuing from building the house upon the rock and the house upon the sand in Matthew 7, I was thinking of two women that I know. And one is a woman that I know has a pastor's heart. And I spoke with her this past week, and she and her husband have built their house upon the rock of Jesus Christ. So you talk to them, you're going to get Jesus. There's, these are biblical truths that they apply in their lives. But I also know a woman who talks religiously, but she's built her house upon the sand. And you can tell that because it sounds good at first, but there's a but there. Uh, one woman, and when I leave her, I feel good and solid and sound. The other, I think, ah, uh, you know something, uh, what is this? And so I'm going to refer to those two women as the first house, the house with a heart after the Lord, and the second house, the house with a heart after herself. Now the first house builds her house upon the rock, and it's sound. Now people, we have this in our individual lives. We have the rock, we have the sand, we choose what we're building on. Now listen, who you listen to, you gravitate toward. Who you listen to, you become. And so if you're listening to somebody who's building their house upon the rock, it will all create according to God's will. If you're listening to somebody who's building their house upon the sand, it's all going to shift and fall apart eventually. So house one built their house upon the rock. House two built their house upon the sand. Now in house one, the Savior and salvation is always being mentioned. Whether directly or indirectly, the Savior, Jesus, and salvation, how he's working in their lives, are always there. They have a conviction. That's who they are. To know them is to know Jesus. But house two, it's always about self and about sin. And you'll know this because they're always criticizing when you get in the flesh, you're going to criticize. When you're in the spirit, you're going to rejoice in God. And so you look and say, rock, sand, who is this person? And what am I hearing? Or how am I responding? See, the person with the heart in house one, they're building after the Savior and they're bearing fruit. The other is withering on the vine. See, with the house built upon the rock, there's confidence and the house on the sand, there's always conflict. And so in our lives, are you listening to building con uh, con conflict in your life? Or are you confident in who you are in your life? Who are you listening to? Somebody who's confident in Jesus Christ. Jesus is their issue. Or are you listening to somebody who's always talking about themselves and causing conflict? Now see, house one... The woman has a heart after the good shepherd. She has a pastor's heart. She's always thinking of others. She's always serving others. There's loving and sacrifice for others. Now listen, Christ and others are the issue. That you can understand when you're following the Spirit of God in your life or when you're building your house upon the rock. But the house upon the sand scatters the sheep and leads them astray. And this woman follows every wind of doctrine. Once she's on this topic, now she's on that topic. And, and you just never know where she's coming from because it doesn't fit all together. She's the issue instead of the Savior being the issue. And in house one, there's restoration. There's praise and worship. And you feel clean and supported. And, and whenever I leave that woman after speaking with her, I just feel, that was good. <laughs> you know, whether we talked about Jesus directly or not, we're talking about Jesus in our life, our family, in our world. There's just something right about being with that person. But when I speak to the woman whose house is built upon rebellion, there's subtle rebellion. There's, there's sneaky, it's almost like it's two-faced and and I feel confusion. Matter of fact, I feel dirty and I feel on guard. I like what T.D. Jake says. He's a black minister out of Dallas, a bishop. 
And he's probably the deepest, cons- con- constant spiritual insight uh, of any man that I read. And T.D. Jakes listened to this southern farmer, and the southern farmer is talking about somebody was saying something, but it didn't seem right. And, and so here's what the farmer says. Something in that milk ain't clean. Something in that milk ain't clean. And, and Jake says, okay. And so now he starts using that. And, and, and so when he talks and he's listening uh, and he's hearing something on television or with another person or other people, uh, he thinks something in that milk ain't clean. And for the woman who builds her house on the sand, uh, whenever I hear her, I'm thinking something ain't clean here. Otherwise, it's tainted. Uh, she says religious things, but it doesn't ring true. Now, here's the difference, people. The difference is it's a head thing or a heart thing. And for the believer, it has to be both, a head thing and a heart thing. See, when I leave woman from house one, the glory of God rests not upon the unrighteous, but upon the righteous. That's what I had, a word of knowledge. I was lying there in bed one morning, I was praying for different people, and God just said that whole sentence to me. The glory of God rests not on the unrighteous, but on the righteous. And so here's the difference. Believing in Jesus, knowing Jesus, and obeying Jesus is a head thing. Loving Jesus is a heart thing. Now I'll say that again. Believing in Jesus, knowing Jesus, and obeying Jesus is a head thing. You've got to be transformed. And the more you, yes, the more you believe and you know and you obey, it's a head thing. You're getting your head on straight. You're finding out what life's all about. But loving Jesus is a heart thing. I mean, how many times did you think you've loved and you realized it was a head thing versus how many times have you loved and you realize and know that it's a heart thing? See, Jesus, when it's a heart thing, Jesus is your foundation. He's your life. He's your reason for living. Now, people, that means Christianity has a long way to go. But when we say, no, wait a minute, I know it's a head thing, and I'm getting all that straight, and I'm building line upon line, precept upon precept, but down in my heart, I love God. Down in my heart, it's not a religious thing, it's a relation thing. And I talk to Jesus, and he ministers to me, and I love Jesus, and I know that I know that I know that Jesus loves me. So I ask you, do you remember when you first realized that you were in love? Now, not in infatuation, not in the passing, uh, you know, when you all of a sudden realized you were in love. Now, I want to talk about a head thing and a heart thing in relationship. My first wife and I, we were together only half an hour. I went home, met her on, I was on uh, army leave, and she was on school vacation with my sister, and I met her, and, uh, and we met, we talked that night, and the next morning she and I went for a walk, and uh, in half an hour, we decided to get married. Do not do that. No, no, no. But it's a head thing that I knew could be a heart thing, but I knew, she and I knew, we were going to get married. We agreed on it after half an hour and then a year later we got married i left drove from kansas city up to williamson where she lived and she was already up there with the wedding party and the families and 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 i drove all the way through and and got there about two or three in the morning and her mother heard us drive in and and me and my best man uh and she comes down and tells says sherry's upstairs top of stairs in the bedroom uh, all the way over the window and there's about four or five others in there asleep and I said okay and so I'm tiptoeing in about two three o'clock in the morning she's by the window uh, and, and her cot is moved over and, and I kneel down and she's awake and she says uh, I knew you would drive all the way through and so I leaned over and I kissed her and uh, and I said okay I'll see you in the morning uh, and and when I leaned over and kissed her forehead I knew I was in love now, now, it wasn't a head thing anymore. I mean, we, we acknowledged all that ahead of time, of course. 
but I knew that I knew. And it wasn't, you know, it was a deep, it was a I knew in my heart that I was in love. Now, six years, or well, then, uh, so we're married, and she gets killed in the motorcycle wreck, and six years later, I uh, meet Kathy, whose her, her husband just died uh, of a heart attack, uh, and she came to me for counseling, and people, I kept everything straight. I kept my head straight. No, no, no. Not going there. Not even in temptation. No. And so after counseling a couple times, I asked her, you know, if you and your kids would like a hot air balloon ride, I'd be glad to give you a balloon ride. And so she agreed to it. And I'm out setting up the balloon, and, and I look across the field, and here comes Kathy walking, and she is crushed because she just lost her husband. I look at her, and no, 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 no. I've got one love. That's my wife. I live, I, she has my whole heart. Not going there, but I, what was that? You know, it was like, no, and, and not only that, she just lost her husband. I, you know, I don't want her to wake up someday and say, whoa, who are you? You know, and it's like, not going there. And so, anyway, uh, in a week or so, I took her out for a date. We went up to Richard's Canal House in Pittsford, and, and uh, after a nice dinner, we were walking around the canal, and the lights are out at night, and, and we happened to reach down and hold hands, and, and, do, 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 do. And, and I'm thinking, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, uh, you know, cause, you know uh, and uh, uh, I thought, well, she might as well find out about my ministry, and so I took her to the Hells Angels Clubhouse on the first date. Uh, she handled that fine, and I thought, there could be a second date here. And so later that week, she comes over to my house, and, and she's all upset, visibly upset, and she'd been out with some girlfriends trying to help her, and they started ragging on their husbands, and, and it just destroyed her, like, why are you talking about your husband? Like, I lost my, I want my, I love my husband, and, and, and so, but anyway, after the date, I just dropped her off, and this was a next few, few days later, and she came, and she says, uh, what did I do? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm telling all this on you, Kathy. But anyway, she said, what? Did I do something wrong last night when you dropped me off? I said, no. And she said, well, you didn't kiss me. And I said, oh, I could kiss you now. Okay. Ding, ding. Okay. And she said, okay. And, and so there, and, and I'll, I'll never forget that kiss. But I'll never forget in the field looking across, there's something in my heart. Now, my head was saying, no, 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 no. My heart was saying, look, look. And how many times, you know, it's a head and a heart thing with God. Oh, it's religion. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. Oh, you know. Uh, but if you listen to your head and to your heart, God will minister to both. And, and, and the man and, and the, the meeting has to come together of head and heart. And so when we realize that there is room for another love, uh, and then we made that commitment of being, of loving and being together, my heart, my head, and my heart finally connected. And so I finally listened to that still, small voice. And so I look back to this very day. I remember, I know the window, I know the house up in Williamson. Matter of fact, as a hospice chaplain, I'd drive through there regularly, and, and, and I'd even stop and I'd look at that window because I know right inside that window there, I kissed my first wife on the forehead, and I knew in my heart that was love forever. And, and then I think about Kathy walking across the field. I can see it, a picture in my mind, and I knew that there is love there. And how many times we're in conflict, we're, it's, you know, wait, 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 how can that be? And God's saying, I'm ministering to your head, and I'm ministering to your heart, and when you put the two together and you realize it's God's love, see, we love God through Jesus Christ. It can be and has to be both a head thing and a heart thing. See, we need to give glory to God. When these two come together and you accept Jesus, you realize he loves you. It's not just a head religious thing any longer. And all of it sounds good. The Bible sounds good. The Christian sounds, doctrine sounds. It's no longer a head thing. It's a heart thing. Now, if you'll turn with me to Matthew 22, 36 and through 40. Matthew 22, 36. 
Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Now this is Jesus. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Otherwise, I love my wife with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind. There's no room for another woman. There's no room for a thing or things or money or what. There's no room for that in my heart, my mind, my soul. I love God with all my heart, with all my soul, and all my mind. And this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And on these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. Now what he means there is, people, from cover to cover, Old Testament and New Testament, everything God said over the years all wraps up to two sentences. Love God, love each other with your heart, your soul, your mind. And so when you come into the house of God, everything else stays out there, the world, the flesh, the devil, your concerns, your anxiety, everything else stays out there. You're past and you're in the present of God. And when we can say, God, I do love you with all my heart. And we need to pray that. That's a Bible verse to pray. Pray Matthew twenty-two forty. Pray Matthew twenty-two thirty-six and 5. Lord, I love you with all my heart, all my soul, and all my body. I love you with myself. And you say, well, what if I'm not there yet? It's a head thing, and you're telling your head what to think because you know it's right. The Spirit of God is talking to you. It's a head thing, and all of a sudden you realize, I do love God. I mean, just stop and think right now. I want you to all say it, and, and, and I want you to whisper it. And, and see how you feel when you say this. I want you to think and say, I love you, God. Okay, I want everybody to just say that quiet. I love you, God. And about half of you didn't say that, did you? I want you all to say that. I love you, God. Are you comfortable with that? God's comfortable with that. I love you, God. And in our lives, we need to say, Lord Jesus, I want, I want to love you more in my head. I want to love you more in my heart. I want to know you with all my head, all my heart, all my being, because I want to share that love with others. When we have that kind of love as a church, people walk in this church and say, guess what? Now, I can take you to church where everybody loves me. I mean, how many of you can say that? I can take you to church where everybody loves me. Well, yeah, but they know. No, 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 no. I can take you to a church where everybody loves me. That's why our saying on the walls all the way around is love, love, love. I mean, just say that out loud to yourself today. Love, love, love. Are you comfortable with that? I mean, this morning in Sunday school, I was talking. I was being honest about being humbled and and. You know, where I first heard that saying years ago, somebody came to church, I just happened to mention love, and he left and he said, love, 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 that's all I hear in that church. Well, I didn't even realize it. And I thought, well, wait a minute, that's a pretty good thing. And so I was mocking him. Sorry. Love, 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 that's all you're going to hear in this church. And I started thinking, God started convicting me with that. Wait a minute, you didn't smart aleck in the pulpit? And, and, and you, you find it odd to say love, love, love in the church? People, <laughs> I feel odd. I feel, well, yeah, God, I know these people. <laughs> so does he. And he's got one thing to say to you. Love, love, love. Because Jesus Christ loves you. That's why he came. He didn't come to make a religion. He didn't even come to start Christianity. He came to show God's love. And when we say, Lord, I believe, I believe you took all my sin on the cross, you took it to the grave, and you wrote and gave me your love when I asked you into my life. And so when Scripture tells us, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, heart, head, the Lord Jesus, thou shalt be saved. And so in our lives daily, we need to confess Jesus Christ to be saved from issues and thinking and thought and language, and, but ultimately, we're saved when we ask Jesus into our life and we believe with our whole heart and our whole mind, all of a sudden it clicks. Amen? So what's it all about? It all hangs on love, love, love. Oh, I get to ring the bell three times.
Let's stand for prayer. God loves you people. Tell somebody God loves them this week. They're waiting to hear the message that you have. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit of God and the words of God this morning. Let everybody leave being touched by God, being touched by you, Lord. Love, love, love. Oh, God, that we would embrace that, that we would embrace that individually as, a fam as individual families and as a body, as a church. And Lord God, bless the other churches in the building today. Love, love, love. Let everyone who enters this building realize they've been touched. What was that? That was the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit ministering the love of God. So Lord, I just pray for people who never asked Jesus into their life and that type of love they would do now. They would do so and say, show me that love, Lord Jesus. I receive you. And Lord, that every one of us would say, Lord, fill up every chamber of our mind, every layer of, of our heart with your love. And we thank you for it in Christ's name. Amen. You're dismissed. On September 11th, 2001, the course of American history was suddenly changed. We remember the chaos and the confusion, the destruction and the heartbreak, the shock of 3,000 lives lost in a single day. But we also remember the great resolve of everyday people, the acts of heroism that brought us together, the men and women who stood in the gap, somehow still fighting, giving every ounce of strength to help others. Decades have passed since that historic day. And in that time, we have learned that despite all the suffering and loss, our God remains faithful. Even when smoke and debris obscure our paths, His unfailing love will carry us through. As we remember those who were lost, let us honor their memory with our lives, giving our own strength to help the hurting, making sacrifices for those around us, and sharing the faith which brings eternal hope and peace. This is our promise and our prayer for 9-11. Hello, I'm Pastor Mark Ammerman, and I want to thank you for being Wednesday night. Hello, I'm Pastor Mark Ammerman, and I want to thank you for being with us today, and I certainly hope you are blessed. I want to invite you to live stream to the pastor's study on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, for a short message out of the Word of God, where God can lead you, guide you, comfort you, strengthen you in your life at this time. So again, thank you for being here. And I hope to see you Wednesday and Sundays.